we are beginning the section on Excel. And let me tell you about Excel. It is the program that in your future job, if you say you know Office, Excel is going to be the thing that you probably will use the most after college. In college, you're doing papers, you're doing maybe some presentations, that's those scary public speaking presentations. You may do that sometime on your job. But on your job and at home, Excel is the program that helps you organize stuff at home, helps you plan a budget, personal or for the family, at the job, handle keeping track of inventory, keeping track of, li track of lists of things. Excel, I've had so many students come back after you've been having a job for a while. It's like, thank you for helping me understand Excel. It is a little more challenging. So uh, I'm happy to stop and help you out with things as we go. So let's get started with Excel by going to our little start button and start typing E-X-C-E-L and we'll start a new Excel application. I'm going to start a blank workshop. Yes. When do you think uh, you'll have our stuff graded by? Should be graded by, done by Monday. Okay. Good, good, good. Question was midterm grading. Yeah, we'll, we'll get... Uh, I think we should get all caught up over the weekend here. So, starting up Excel, starting a blank workbook. This is a workbook. There will be multiple worksheets in our workbook. And we'll going, be going through those terms. Before we even worry about building something, let's just get familiar. Well, first of all, let's take a look at what we're planning to build. We're going to build a, a worksheet, a budget worksheet, that's going to look like this. You might think, wait, that's a lot of stuff. Well, little by little, we're going to be putting in titles and then the number names, you know, titles of columns and rows, and then we'll be typing in numbers. Most of the time, we're just going to be copying and pasting everything from January because we're estimating the budget of a fake company, a uh, real estate company. So we're doing a, a budget we're, uh, estimate of next year's budget planning for this company that does real estate sales and they have a website and they pay for office equipment. Our plan is also to make a pie chart of the, the relative spending in different areas. Of course this is horrible key, you can't even tell what pieces of the pie mean anything, so we'll make it look better than that. So as we plan our data, first of all we think about what do we want to show in our worksheet. Well we'd like to show a title, some row heading saying what do the numbers mean in that row and different columns that are representing the, the months of the year January to December and then also we're going to have a total column on the very right side giving the total across the year for all those different amounts of income and all those different categories of expenses so this is the plan we planned it out a little scratch paper a budget table that looks something like that Okay, so that's our plan, and now let's get started on it. First of all, we're just going to get comfortable with Excel. Let's just take a look here. I can click here and control roll the mouse up to focus on what are cells. Excel deals with cells. Little grid. Think of little boxes where we're keeping track of a number. And to navigate, I can just click on the cell that I need to be in. The address of that cell goes with column name and then row. So let it, column, column letter followed by row number is the location of that cell, the address bar, the name of that cell. And I actually can type here and give it a name other than C3, but let's just go with the standard naming of our cells. The reference to our cell is column row. The home tab, very similar. I can adjust the font of the text cell by cell. Think of this as like the paragraph in Word. Any formatting applies to that cell even before I put any content in there. I can say make all the cells bold and I won't know they're bold until I start typing and say hey I see that that is formatted for bold. So we'll learn how to use the formatting and mainly we're starting with just entering numbers 
or, or words in cells. I can control alignment of text within a cell. And here's something a little new. I can decide what type of information is being held in that cell. She treat it like a general uh, number format or say, no, I know what's in there is a date or a time or a percentage. It'll display it based on what kind of a number I say is in it. But most of the time, we let Excel kind of guess what goes in there by using the general category of numbers. So let's get started by adding some information. We'll start with cell A1, where we're going to be putting in the information that eventually will become a title. So we go to A1 and we just type the name of this spreadsheet. Click on, click on cell A1 and just start typing. Wrangled Real Estate Budget. Now watch what happens. If I spell it wrong, it doesn't give me any red squigglies. It does not tell you you have a spelling error. But later on, we can come back and use the review thing and actually uh, check for spelling. But it doesn't automatically show me spelling errors. Now, if I realize I had a spelling error, I could come back and retype it. Or I could come here to the formula bar, click there and backspace there and fix it and hit enter and be done. Or I can double click on a cell and now I'm in edit mode in that cell and I can click my insertion point and fix or correct the spelling. Hitting tab or hitting enter or clicking the check mark all does the same thing. It confirms, yes, that's what goes in that cell. Take me to the next cell. When you see the outline around the cell, that means whatever you do, whatever formatting you apply, whatever you type, is going to go into that cell. And we do want something to go in here. It's going to say, this is our monthly estimates. So I just start typing monthly estimates. Later on, we're going to format this to be nice and big fonts and across the top of our chart. But for now, all we care about is the content of that cell. Now, just for fun, what if I click here and start typing something like B, 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 B? Look at that. It blocks out the rest of this cell. It's like what, there's something here now. It's going to be in front of the leftover of this cell. Now, if I wanted to see everything in this cell, I can click over here just on the border and see how my cursor becomes a double arrow. I can click there and adjust the width of that column or let Excel adjust by double clicking on the border and it auto fits that column. I'm going to come back there and delete what's in cell B1 because I want this is only going to be the only title. To delete anything, you can click on the cell, hit the delete key, and it empties that cell of whatever's in it. And now the cell over here can now kind of overlap over the empty cells. So cells, the text in a cell, will overlap other columns if those other columns are empty. As soon as something goes in a column or a cell, it will block out this content if there's more than what can fit in that box. And we'll learn more about entering data. That's the key thing to Excel. So what I want to do now is add a row header for row three, and I type the word income. This is going to become the heading for my section where I'm going to be listing the estimated income. And I hit tab or right arrow will take me over to the next column. And this is become, going to become the header, the heading identification for this column. And we're going to have a budget for the year. So we're going to be putting the months of the year here. Now if I spell the month right, watch what I can do. I hit enter just to confirm that's what I want to put there. I come back and click on that cell. And you notice there's a little dot in the lower right corner. If I click on that or I hover over that dot, you'll see my cursor become a little narrow black plus sign. I click and drag to the right. This is called uh, the fill handle. I'm 
going over to the right, and I keep going, and it will keep it will move the page for me until I get out to column M, and then I let go, and look at that. It wrote out the months of the year for me with that fill handle. The fill handle is a nice way if you have a plan sequence. I can do the same thing with Monday, with the word Monday. Why is it that typing there? I don't know. Some little delay happened. I can type Monday and then come back and grab the fill handle. Can you guess what it's going to fill in? Look at that. It puts in the rest of the days of the week. Control Z is your undo. Or I can hit delete and delete what's in those cells because that was just for practice. All right, so I did my headers across the top. And before I forget, let's put in a heading across cell uh, column N. Now to go further down, I can click on the cell and then arrow to the right and it will scroll over for me. And then I type in row three, column N. This is going to be the total column. And now to come back to the beginning, I can arrow over and come back to the beginning of the next. We are going to do the similar thing down in row eight. So let's arrow down to row eight, and I'm going to type in expenses. And at that little section is also going to have its own little headings of January and the rest of the months. So let's do the fill handle thing again. Click January, grab the fill handle, and fill over all the way out to column M, and arrow over. Oh, I want to. Click on the next cell, click on that one, and we're also going to have a total column there. Like two little charts, two little tables, one on top, one just above the other, with headings for that particular section of the table. All right, so I have column titles in two different places because I have two different sections. Now let's add the row headings, which are going to say commission. We're ex estimating our commission each month. Commission. Two S's. There we go. Enter. And the next row is going to be headed interest. We're estimating the interest on our commission. And then we're going to have a total for this income section. They planned it out to have an, a blank row here to separate the two, kind of think of the two little mini tables inside of my worksheet number one. And I've done enough work so, so far, so let's do a control S to save this. And since it's our first save, let's go to the section where we're going to save this. I'm putting it in section two. I'm going to call this my last name, which is John Smart. I'm the fake student John Smart. I'm going to call it EX1, and then I'll add to that real estate budget. Real estate budget. Hitting enter or clicking on the save button. Now we'll save that file right in my special folder so I know where to find it when I need to upload it. All right, so I have this section, commission, interest total. Let's fill out the next one. We're going to have in the expenses section our rent, our office rent, our utilities. Notice how it is aligning to the left. When you type in words, words automatically align left. If I wanted it to be aligned in a different way, I can just like in Word, I can use centered or right alignment. After utilities, I put advertising. Then website, I pay someone to support my website, maybe do some design on it. I have some hard copy printing, brochures and things. I have some office supplies. And I have travel. I think a better word might be fuel, but we'll, we'll use gas. We have this dangerous category called miscellaneous. That's a dangerous category 
If your miscellaneous category gets larger than any other category, time to find out what do you mean by miscellaneous and, and put details. And I think I spelled it wrong. No, I think I spelled it right. Well, let's just do a spell check to see if I spelled everything right so far. I can do review, spelling. Yes, go back to the top. Triangle, that was where that. Oh, yeah, that is happy. Now let's add a few more. So after miscellaneous, we have, we're going to have a total of that column of expenses. And then we're going to skip a blank row and we're going to calculate net which means our net income. Income minus expenses. Think income minus expenses is a business saving formula. I also like to call it the marriage saving formula. I have heard financial issues can be a major cause of marital anxiety or frustration. So if you have a way to calculate budgets using something like Excel. When that question pops up, honey, what's this expense? You can go to your Excel spreadsheet and say, yes, that was planned. Remember, I am allowed to have this entertainment or uh, recreation as part of our budget because we need that. And yes, that fits within our budget. So having a plan can help keep that old marriage going. I'm going to do a control S as I go along just to make sure I've saved what I've done so far. Okay, so we have column headings and row headings. Let's get busy now entering some numbers. We have numbers, estimates for each month, maybe based on last year's expense, uh, commissions. 12,000 commission in January, February, another 12,000 that I just simply type in either using my number pad or my uh, numbers up above on the keyboard, 14,000. Each month has its own estimate, probably based on last year's. Oh, we're getting a higher estimated commission in in April. May comes along. Wait a minute, do I have my number correct? Sorry, sorry, April is number 14, May is the 16. So to correct this, double click, backspace over the six and type the four. Tab to the right or arrow to the right. Ooh, arrow to the right doesn't work until I hit tab. That takes me to the next cell. May is 16,000. June bumps up to 18,500. July is the big month. 20 grand we're expecting in commission in July. And then August is eight, back down to 18,500. And 18,500 for September. Dropping back down to 14,000 in October and 14,000 in November, and December, 16,500. Bumps up a little bit as we approach the end of the year. So there's my estimated commission. Now, I want to put in the numbers for the next row. If I click enter right now, look at that, it takes me back, oh, not quite all the way back to column B. Now let's add our interests. Our estimated interest for each month, $100. And you know, I see that I'm estimating $100 for all the months. I could type 100 11 more times, or click the 100, grab the fill handle, and drag it to copy it to the other months. So that's our fill handle method of filling in those numbers. We're going to skip and come back to letting Excel do the rest of the work here. Excel is going to do this calculation for us. Let's now enter some estimated numbers for our expenses. We're looking at an estimated that every month we have $1,500 in, in rent expenses. Now I want that to go to the rest of the months. I could do the fill handle, but let me show you something. If I click on that cell, control C, copy, and now select these cells where I want to paste it to all the way out to December. I can get to, I can do control V, paste, and it puts 1500 in all those cells. I could
could have done the fill handle, but copy control C and paste control V will let me copy paste across to multiple fills. Now to stop the marching ants, I can hit the escape key up the left, and I'll fill in my estimated utilities. 325 is our estimated utilities for every month. And 400 is our estimated advertising for every month. Now watch this. I can copy these two cells by going Control C, copy. I can then select the two rows all the way out to December by dragging through while the arrow is a wide arrow, that's our selection tool, control V, paste, look at that, paste in those two rows across multiple rows. Hitting escape to turn off the marching ants, and I have much of that table filled in. Now our website, we don't pay anything, so let's put zero, and let's do a, let's do the fill handle then, just practice our different ways of copying. Fail handle zero all the way out to December. And then come back to the month of July. I believe, yes. And in July, I pay for my website the annual fee of $500. Whoops. 500 dollars Hitting enter confirms my enter of the number into that cell. Now I'm going to roll or control roll the mouse out just so you can see there's my bit, what my table looks like so far. Now our expected printing cost, $200. Our expected office supplies, well, it's going to vary, but let's put a uh, zero in there for now. Actually, there's going to be a 200, but we'll put a zero in there for now. Our estimated gas for every month is $100. And our estimated miscellaneous, we're estimating at $250. Now I can take all four of these cells, control, copy, control, V, paste, or I could also do the fill handle thing. The fill handle is like copy this, these cells over to the right. And there it copies all those numbers. And now I'm going to come back to the office supplies and enter 200 for January. I'm going to come back to Office Supplies 200, Control C, copy, and then over in April, click, Control V, paste, I'm replacing the zero with 200. So I copy 200, I could just as well type 200. July is going to also be 200, Control V, and October is more spending on office supplies. So every four months, one, two, three, every three months, I am buying office supplies. Okay, we have our numbers in our spreadsheet. Now we're ready to start letting Excel do some work for us. So far, we have entered numbers filled in the, the cells. Now, last class, someone had noticed that when they entered a number, it was not right aligned. Remember on the Home tab, I can adjust the alignment of any cell by clicking any of these alignments. And suppose I had a number that I just wanted it centered or wanted it left aligned. I can just click on how the alignment should go for that particular cell. By default, numbers align to the right, non-numbers align on the left. That's just the default behavior of Excel. So what have we done so far? We've entered headings for our rows. We've entered numbers representing the money earned or spent that's underneath the column heading. Now we're going to let Excel calculate our total income for January, and then we'll copy it to the other months. How do I do that? Well, watch this. I go to where I want the total to appear for that month, the total income, click on it, and then I, I slowly wander up to my ribbon 
and I head over to the right, I'll see a little Greek sigma standing for summation on that particular column. I hit the sigma, and look what happened here. I had equal sum <coughs> b4 colon b5 shows up right here in this cell. What does that mean? Equal sum b4 colon b5. Well, let's look at it piece by piece. The equal in Excel means, Excel, I am starting a formula where you have to do the calculations for me. This is what saves you time in Excel, letting it insert functions for you and letting it do the calculation for you of the summation of all the numbers from of whatever is above me in row or column B, row 5. Well, it's going yeah, to put the uh, result of the sum from B4 to B5. So add those two together. Now there's a different way to do it. We'll show you that in a second. I hit enter and Excel does the calculation for me. And since I want to do this calculation for all the months of the year, I click on that formula I just entered. I can see the formula up in the formula bar, but I can also fill handle this formula to the right all the way out to December. Each month has its own calculated total of the income. And it's always good to check your answer. Does that make sense? 12,000 with interest of 100. Yeah, my total would be 12,100. And I fill handle over that formula. So that is the sigma function filled that in. Now remember, I can double click on that cell and I see the formula. But did you notice if I hit escape, I can stop editing that formula. The escape key is very important right here. If you're in the middle of editing a formula, or you happen to double click and you got a formula jumping out at you that confuses you or that you don't need to see, escape, upper left escape, takes you out from accidentally editing that cell. Oh, no, I have to hit, okay, maybe it was a slow response. Escape or enter confirms. Yes, that's the formula that goes there. That's correct. And that formula, I can see for June, it adds the numbers up for June. Escape stops editing. Now here's a great key to use to verify you have done your work correctly. Control upper left tilde key, control upper left tilde, lets me toggle between seeing numbers that you were entered by hand or numbers that were calculated. There'll be some formula showing what calculation it did on and how to put display that data in that cell. And remember how B4, B5 meant commission and interest in column B. Notice here when I copy the formula over to the next row, column, it automatically adjusted the reference to the column to C4, C5. That's what we call relative addressing. Think of this as saying, I'm going to add up the two numbers above me. The two numbers above him have different addresses, but they are the two numbers above that one. And we'll see which is the smaller one by turning off or toggling back to see the numbers. Control tell it. And I can see then the numbers that are calculated by Excel. based on that formula. And watch what happens. If I say, wait a minute, in, in February our interest was 200, it will immediately update the formula calculation. Control Z will back out the change I made. So this is the huge part of Excel, having the function that gives you a summary of the numbers, the total of them, can now display in this row. Okay, I have these numbers. I want to have totals showing up. Now 
Now I did it one at a time. I could click summation, click sigma. Watch this. If I say all these three rows, I want them to be the total of that row. Select true where those cells are and click the sigma key and it has calculated the totals without me having to do one at a time. Click sigma, click sigma. It calculates the totals by me just clicking it fewer, less times. And again, to see the formula, control tilde, and I can see that, yes indeed, there is the sum, and it changed its row based on what row had the numbers to be added up. All right, now let's do some calculations down below. <clears throat> We're going to calculate total expenses for each month. You've seen us do it now, let's do it again. Total, let's try the sigma. Click once on sigma and what do we get? Oh, look, sum, e, or sorry, equal, that says to Excel, start a new formula. Sum is the name of my formula. And the parentheses mean, these are the cells that you do the sum of. Well, can you guess what those numbers are pointing to? I can see that row B16 is this number. And what was the other... Uh, Do that again. B9 to B16 means give me the summation of all the numbers starting at B9 going all the way down to B16. And then I hit enter. And because I am in control tilde mode, I don't see the result until I can type control tilde, control upper left, tick key, or with, or with the tilde. There it is giving me the calculation. Now, I can use the fill handle or the copy, control C, select through where I want to paste it to, all the way up to column M, and paste. And I have my totals for each row. Now, they're not, you know, a lot of them are the same number because up above here, we're estimating the same numbers. We did have a few changes of numbers here, and these, you can see, every third month, they get a little bump. And in July, even more of a bump because I'm paying my website. So these are the expenses that were calculated based on my itemized expenses estimates for each month. Now before, did we do the summation? Let's go to the right here. Did we do the summation? Oh, look at this. We haven't yet done the total for that row. Remember how we can do that? Select true where I want to put the total. Click the Greek sigma. And it has done a calculation. It's always good to either hit top or control tilde or click on it and verify. Is that the formula I want? Remember, and remember, if I double click on that, it shows me the formula. And in the colors, it shows me what numbers are involved in that summation. So point, we call that point and click. And then I can see what this formula is getting its numbers from. A dangerous thing that can happen to you, though, if you are in the middle of editing a formula and you go click somewhere else, you can mess up your formula because it's trying to guess what you mean to go in that place. So before you enter, or you're once you're done entering a formula, hit enter or click the check mark or hit escape if you don't want to make any changes, it will take you off from accidentally modifying that, that formula. That's one, I'd say one confusion of Excel. When you double click, you are now editing that formula. If you click somewhere else, Excel is guessing that, oh, you want a different number to go here. Well, if I click somewhere else, depending on whether it thinks I'm entering the letters, it'll mess up, possibly mess up what the range is of what's being some uh, added together somewhere somewhere else now control tilde shows me that each of these rows has the sum from
column B out to column M on that row that I'm in. Control tilde again, again, and I see the results of those calculations. Now this is the wonder, the great part of Excel. If I decide, wait a minute, I gave the wrong number for the cost of our website. They just bumped up their price. I can click on that cell, type in the new price, and hit enter. Once I hit enter, I will see all my formulas being recalculated based on my new number. I can control Z, back up any changes I made, and then it, the summations will reflect the, the uh, calculation I've already done. So Excel lets you, and does the, is doing the work for us. Now let's just do a few more things just to finish up our practice with Excel for today. We'll be doing more on Monday. We need to calculate the net income. Well, what will be the net income? What do you think the calculation will be? What do you think? What's that? Yeah, our estimated income right there minus estimated total expense. But there is no sigma to do that for us. What can I do? Well, we have to enter a formula by hand. I type the equal symbol. That tells Excel, hey, you're going to have to do some work here for me. I see that B6 contains the total income. So I just type B6. It doesn't have to be uppercase B6. And I want to subtract from that number what I see in B17. So I can just type equal B6 minus B17. And if I hit enter, I will get the calculation. If I double click on it, it highlights in different colors the two numbers that it's taking, subtracting the expenses from the total. And I have the calculation. Once I hit enter, I get 91.25 for January. Well, remember I could fill handle the total summation formula. I can do the same thing for this. Click on that formula, grab the fill handle, it's going to turn it into a dark X, fill it all the way out to column M. And now I have the net income for those months. It's not too bad because our total expenses are a lot lower than our income most of the time. Unless we have a big lavish gift, buy ourselves a commercial jet or something, our numbers are going to, uh, well, it's, it's calculating the income minus the expenses. There is your mini marriage saving formula. Your net income is this month's income minus this month's expenses. And miscellaneous, we don't want it to be too big. Rent is our major expense. But don't ignore the other ones because they will pile up on you. Before you know it, you're spending more than you meant to because you were ignoring some numbers into your budget. Okay, so we did Total income, B6, minus total expenses, B17. Double click to see the formula. Escape to get out of that. Control tilde to see all my formulas. Control tilde to come back to see the numbers calculated by Excel. So, we have totals across the rows. Oh, I see there's one total. Let's go ahead and do a net total clicking here and doing summation and then I hit enter and now I have my total net across the year I have earned $154,600 if this budget table is true that means some some quite a bit of income here because we've had some good sales. We're getting a lot of money from selling real estate. That makes sense then that by the end of the year, I've got plenty to put into savings or my 401k retirement. Or maybe bump up what a, a 
are subcategorized miscellaneous if this number starts being a major number. Okay, so we let Excel fill in formulas, calculate formulas, and now we're going to do a little statistics on our numbers just because the boss came along and said, you know, that's interesting, but could you calculate the uh, minimum and maximum values? I guess they talk about it, but they actually don't use it. I hadn't, I hadn't seen that before. They calculate net. Oh, I guess they're not using the minimum and maximum. They mentioned minimum and maximum, make, making me think that they were going to do something. Okay, now I can save this once more to make sure everything I've done so far is saved to the disk. And now I can get ready to make it look pretty. We're going to want to make it look like this. Well, what do we need to do? We're going to need to enlarge and center those title cells and turn them green. Enlarge and center the monthly expenses. We're going to put these headings in a particular format, nice and readable. And the same for this one. Nice and readable uh, lettering in our in our final copy, and I can apply styles to things. But I'm going to stop here so we don't get too far ahead of section one in filling in our budget table. So do a control S, make sure that that is saved. You want to upload it to a safe place like your Google Drive, or you can even use Schoology to, uh, to upload your current version for later reference. Save that. Close out Excel. And have a great day. This has been recorded, so I will stop the recording.